Welcome back to the show, everyone. Today, I'm going to bring you a little story, but it's also a story that we can learn from, and it's something that you really, like, critically need to pay attention to if you have an intent to buy a house within the next handful of months, and we'll kind of get into it. Before we do, if you could please subscribe to the channel, that would be lovely. It actually quite helps us out because sometimes, and I'm guilty of it as well, I'll watch someone's channel, I'll consume their content, and I'm like, that was good. And I forget to actually hit the little thumbs up button and uh, hit the damn subscribe thing. So do that, that would help comments. It, I mean, if you're feeling like above and beyond, like you just wanna be nice today, leave a comment. I don't care if you comment with the word comment because it's all the same damn thing to the algorithm. So today what we are talking about, I'll just give you a story, okay? So a buddy of mine, we're gonna be helping with his move to a new state and he called me last week and he said, hey, I'm, I'm thinking about buying a new truck, okay? And I'm just trying to figure out is that uh, like, can I do that or not? Like I know that there's some like people that say, don't do any major purchases like that as you're about to buy a home. So he was smart. He called and he asked the question and I said, well, let's find out. We need to ask people, not me. We need to ask lenders because that is, uh, you know, that's how that would work. So here's the deal, a little bit of context. He's looking at buying something in about the next six to nine months, just to put it in, in a sort of time perspective. If you're looking at buying a house, you know, a year from now, I mean, highly unlike, I, I mean, I pr probably would not even check with a lender. Just go ahead, send it. It's a year out. But if we're talking within six to nine months, okay, we're within a window where we do need to start being a little bit careful with other major life purchases. Because here's the two thing, and here's what I told Justin, my buddy Justin. I, I said, look, I, when you buy a vehicle, your credit takes a pretty significant hit. Mine, as a frame of reference, when I bought my vehicle a couple years ago, I mean, I ate about 50 points on my credit. That sucks. I still don't think my credit's back to where it was before buying that damn truck. Um, so your credit does take a pretty decent hit because that's a, that's a hard credit pull versus a soft one. Um, so it is gonna wind up impacting your credit. There's that, but there's also something called debt to income ratio, right? Okay, well you just took a new credit, right? Or, or new debt in essence. Um, you obtained new credit, so you, you, I guess, took on new debt. I, I think you're tracking with what I'm saying there. And um, debt to income ratio becomes very important when you're buying a home because you can only go to a certain ratio. I can't remember what the ratios are. That's why we have lenders because they do the finance stuff. We do the house buying stuff. But these are the two big considerations, right? Is it going to impact your credit significantly to the point where it could actually impact you either being able to qualify or the type of interest rate that you would get on a home? And then number two, what's it going to do to your debt to income ratio? So I got Justin in touch with a lender, kind of nationwide lender uh, that we use, works with some of our long distance clients and um, just said, hey, talk to, talk to him, just run the scenario past him. He's probably gonna ask you a couple questions like how much money do you make? Are there any other debts that you have in terms of like an existing mortgage or vehicle or boat or stupid RVs or whatever you do with your money, right? Um, or if you finance refrigerators and big screen TVs and shit like that, please don't do that. Please um, be a responsible adult and just save enough money to pay for your fucking Samsung TV, you know? But that's just my two cents. Uh, nothing to, it's just my two cents, everyone. So <laughs> if vehicle, boats, shit like that, big ones, I'd say if you're within six to nine months, and Justin was was totally fine. The lender basically said, all good, dude, send it. But he gets to now buy the truck with a sense of confidence that, hey, it's not gonna impact you when you go to buy that home in six to nine months. So if you are within that window, call it within about a nine month window, I would really recommend if you, if you either know the agent that you're gonna be working with or the lender you're gonna be working with, hit them up. Quick phone call, couple questions. It's probably gonna take them all of about maximum five minutes to tell you if you're gonna be good to go or if you should pump the brakes on that major purchase so you don't screw, screw up the, uh, the house purchase, right? Relatively straightforward sort of industry tip today, but it could wind up making a difference to you because um, they're hard people. Same thing, by the way, when it comes to like, don't like the week, uh, like you're already under contract on a house and then you go buy the truck, same exact thing. Like, yo, you need to pump your brakes big time on that one and talk to your lender before you do anything. Same thing with appliances, all that shit. Like if any of that's going on your credit, you need to talk to your damn lender. If you're under contract on a house currently, 
do not buy anything without talking to your lender. I'm not talking about food, unless it's like a $2,000 steak or something that's going on your credit card. But like, do not buy anything of significance. I mean, that includes firearms for my guys. I tell them that all the time. Do not be doing crazy gun purchases while you're under contract on a house. Pump the brakes, check with your lender first, okay? <clears throat> Whiskey recommendation here. I, you know, I, I don't know how to pronounce all the Japanese names. Um, Mon Shu, Mon Shou, something like that, okay? But this is a malt whiskey, and I admit it's it's probably been about three months since I cracked into this and have uh, gotten into it. I mean, you'll see not that much of it's been drank. That's probably only, you know, maybe three, four drinks worth. But uh, I remember quite enjoying this and thinking, yes, this was a winner. I might have this tonight, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, because it's been a minute. Now I'm kind of in curious, like, is it as good as I remember it being? Because I remember thinking this was quite good. Definitely had the malt vibe going on if, you, if you're wa <laughs> Japanese whiskey. Somehow that came out as Wapanese. <laughs> Jesus, stupid Mondays. If you're a Japanese whiskey drinker, uh, I do think you will probably enjoy this. It made a good first impression on me. Can't remember the exact price on the bottle. I think um, kind of around that $50 mark, somewhere in there. So kind of in like a nice zone of, you know, a nice sipper. Not a daily drinker that's, you know, you might not want to drink every day, but you know, you know what I mean when I say a daily drinker. So I would throw that in the recommend list, sure. And when that's gone, yes, I will buy another bottle of it. Unless I crack it tonight, and turns out it was shit, but I was just like, I don't know, impressionable when I when I first cracked it. Beyond that, uh, if you need real estate help, let us know. We got stuff going on at the 1911 Syndicate. You can always go check that out. Uh, buying land to shoot on is really not anything that we're interested in talking to you about. We will give you the courtesy of replying because any business should answer their phone and reply to emails and be a business. But please don't email us about that. Please. I'm begging you for the love of God. Please stop emailing me about buying land where you can shoot out to a thousand yards. <clears throat> please. Anyway, I hope you guys are doing good. We'll talk to you soon.